Radhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sham Sundara Tha Sham Sundara Gaya Radhe Sham Radhe Sham Radhe Sham Gaya Radhe Sham Jaya Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram. Jaya Gauranitai, 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 Jaya Gauranitai. Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Gouda Hari Bol. Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad. Jaya Vishwapad Paramahamsa Parivara Jagachaya Ashtata Shatta Shishama Chila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Shami Chila Prabhupada Ki Jaya Vishwapad Paramahamsa Parivara Jagachaya Ashtata Shatta Shishama Chila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasari Thakur Shila Prabhupada Ki Anantakuri Vaishnavarinda Ki Shirup Si Sanatan Bhattaragunachi Jeevagopalabhattarasaragunachari Goswami Prabhu Ki 
Pramse Kausi Krishna Chaitanya Pavunita Ananda Siya Deita Gadadar Shivazari Gora Bhaktavarinda Ki Sajiradha Krishna Gogopa Gobi Gobina Chan Kundaradha Kundagiri Govadana Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki, Matura Dham Ki, Maipana Vidham Ki, Jagarapuri Dham Ki Tutsi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki, Gange Vani Devi Ki Hari Nam Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Sri Sri Gonitai Ki Sri Sri Krishna Bararam ki, Sri Sri Radha Shama Sundar ki, Go Premanande Hari Hari Bol, Sama Veta Bhakta Vrinda ki, All glories to the Assembly of Bhaktis, All glories to the Assembly of Bhaktis, All glories to Sigura and Chiguranga, All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Reading from the Bhagavad Gita, as it is, Second chapter, Contents of the Bhagavad Gita summarized. Text number 39. Eshate Abhita Sankhya Eshate Abhita Sankhya Bhudi Yoga Tvimam Sinu Buddha Yukto Yaya Parta Karma Bandham Prahasyasi Eshate Abhita Sankhya Buddhir Yoga Tvimam Srinu Buddhya yukto yaya parta Karma bandham prahasyasi Esa te bita sankhe Buddhir yoga tvimam srinu Buddhya yukto yaya parta Karma bandham prahasyasi Eshate Abhita Sankhya Buddhi Yoga Tvimam Shino Buddhya Yukta Yaya Partha Karma Bandham Prahasyasi Esha All these Te Unto you Abhita Described Sankhya By analytical study Buddhi, intelligence, yoga, in work without fruitive result, to, but, imam, this, Srinu, just here, buddhya, by intelligence, yukta, Dovetailed, yaya, by which, 
Partang, O son of Prita, Karma Bandham, Bandage of Reaction, Prahasyasim, You can be released from. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sila Aisi Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sila Prabhupada. Sila Prabhupada Ki. Translation, thus far I have described this knowledge to you through analytical study. Now listen as I explain it in terms of working without fruitive results. O son of Prita, when you act in such knowledge, you can be you can free yourself from the bondage of works. Purport, according to the Nirukti or the Vedic Dictionary, Sankhya means that which describes things in detail. And Sankhya refers to that philosophy which describes the real nature of the soul. And yoga involves controlling the senses. Arjuna's proposal not to fight was based on sense qualification. Forgetting his prime duty, he wanted to cease fighting because he thought that by not killing his relatives and kinsmen, he would be happier than by enjoying the kingdom after conquering his godsons and brothers, the sons of Dhritarashtra. In both ways, the basic principles were for sense qualification. Happiness derived from conquering them and happiness derived by seeing Kinsmen and life are both on the basis of personal sense gratification. Even at the sacrifice of wisdom and duty, Krishna therefore wanted to explain to Arjuna that by, that by killing the body of his grandfather, he would not be killing the soul proper. And he explained that all individual persons, including the Lord himself, are eternal individuals. They were individuals in the past, they are individuals in the present, and they, will be, and they will continue to remain individuals in the future. Because all of us are individual souls eternally. We simply change our bodily dress in different manners, but actually we keep our individuality even after liberation from the bondage of material dress. An analytical study of the soul and the body has been very graphically explained by Lord Krishna. And this descriptive knowledge of the soul and the body from different angles of vision has been described here as Sankhya in terms of the Nirukti dictionary. This Sankhya has nothing to do with the Sankhya philosophy of the artist Kapila. Long before the, uh, the post of Kapila Sankhyas, the Sankhya philosophy was expounded in the Srimad Bhagavatam by the true Lord Kapila, the incarnation of Lord Krishna, who explained his, it to his mother Devahuti. It is clearly explained by him that the Purusha, the Supreme Lord, is active and that he creates by looking over the Prakriti. This is accepted in the Vedas and in the Gita. The description in the Vedas indicates that the Lord glanced over the Prakriti or nature and, and impregnated it with atomic individual souls. All these individuals are working in the material world for sense gratification. And under the spell of material energy, they are thinking of being enjoyers. This mentality is dragged to the last point of liberation when the living entity wants to become one with the Lord. This is the last snare of Maya sense gratificatory illusion, and it is only after many, many births of such sense, gratification, sense gratificatory activities that the great soul surrenders unto Vasudev, Lord Krishna, thereby fulfilling the search of the, the ultimate truth. Hmm. So long purport, I will just say a few words to the beginning of this purport and then we'll continue reading and I'll say a few more words. Gureve Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Itadalaya Krishna Krishna Bhakta Itad Bhakta Inamo Namaha. So here Krishna is speaking to Arjuna about Sankhya Yoga. Uh, so as explained by Prabhupada, 
and as mentioned in the Nirukti Vedic Dictionary, Sankhya means describing in detail in regards to this material world, the different elements which are there. <coughs> and a property is referring also to Lord Kapitale, Kapitale, Kapila Dev, who explained the same Sankhya philosophy to his mother, Devahuti. And he also mentioned about, Propan mentions about one Kapital, Kapil Dev, who was an atheistic person. So there are six uh, philosophers which are well known, and they have their um, philosophical <coughs> understanding or philosophy, so different philosophies may be there. So one of them is Sankhya Yoga. The others are mentioned also, and Prabhupada has explained that actually the persons who are, uh, or the devotees who are engaged in propagating Krishna consciousness, they should be aware. As mentioned in the first canto, anyone who dares to sit on the Vyasasan, he should know the six philosophers and the six philosophies. So, so one of them is Kapital Dev, who spoke Sankhya philosophy. Another of the great philosophers. And so Kapila Dev, he was speaking about, of course, uh, the absolute truth, the Supreme Lord, and explaining, that's property is, is mentioning here in purport, how the Lord is impregnating this material world uh, by his glance. And that's all the living entities are coming in this world. And of course, with the help of Brahma, or even Lord Shiva and Durga Devi, then everything is falling in place. And the different living entities are then accepting different bodies in this world, and then they are engaged in activities in this world, but forgetful of the Supreme Lord. So therefore the Supreme Lord is coming, or is a representative, and they are giving this transcendental knowledge. So one of them was Lord Kapiladev, who spoke Sankhya philosophy. And so here Krishna himself is explaining that, uh, that uh, to Arjuna, I have told you now this Sankhya philosophy. And also Buddhi. So Buddhya, by knowledge, by intelligence, you should try to understand. So to understand actually these philosophies, there is a need of... Uh, having some intelligence. And therefore there is a need also uh, of approaching a spiritual master who is knowledgeable, who has sadhbudi, transcendental intelligence. And by hearing from a devotee, representatives, representative of the Lord, that it is more easy to understand this philosophy. So Patanjali was another philosopher and he was explaining about the uh, process of Ashtanga Yoga, also known sometimes as Hatha Yoga. So different, um, so Ashtanga, eight limbs of this uh, performance of yoga. Of course we know also yoga means to link with the Lord. Prabhupada is explained here in the purport yoga that means uh, uh, controlling the, the senses also in the mind. Uh, and that is absolutely required. And if for anyone who uh, wants to advance in spirit life, performing yoga, he has to control the mind and the senses, or he has to try to control the mind and the senses. It has been also explained so that two, perform, two actually, uh, especially referring to yoga, uh, to this process of connecting with the Lord. So yoga also means connecting with the Lord. That is Sankhya Yoga and, and Ashtanga Yoga. So Ashtanga means eight limbs are there. Yam Niyam, following some rules and regulations. Vidini Shade, uh, some things which we should do and some prohibitions are there. Like it is mentioned, we should get up early in the morning, take a bath, morning bath. So that is the regulation. Uh, which uh, we have to follow. Prata Hasnan. Everyone has to take a bath in the morning. 
and put on fresh clothes and then engage in spiritual activities. And we, should, we only take Krishna prasadam and we should be truthful, we should be uh, <coughs> trying to act for benefit of others also, not only for our own, own self. So different uh, moral principles are there also, but especially we should then engage in spiritual activities, in devotional activities, linking with the Supreme. So, and then prohibitions are there, as we now know, uh, Prabhupada mentioned and it is mentioned in the scriptures, for sinful activities have to be avoided by all means, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and eating of meat, and so on. But other things are there, one should not lie, one should not steal, and uh, so some rules and regulations are there which we have to follow. One should not hurt anyone, so ahimsa should be there, non-violence, that we have to follow, yam niyam. And then uh, also asan, uh, so in order to meditate one should sit properly on an asan. And then even some exercises are there, yoga asan, which are helpful for good health, and then uh, so which is also necessary to have good health in order to serve nicely. And even when Prabhupada was chanting, Japa, you can hear there's a famous uh, tape of Prabhupada chanting and then he's chanting Maha Mantra and periodically he's saying, sit properly. So we should sit properly while chanting. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> so and then of course we have to chant nicely and, and hear attentively and then pray to Krishna so that we can remember him also. And then also pranayam, breathing that is also helpful, breathing exercises which are there uh, to control the mind and the senses. Uh, and then after that, um, pratyahar, controlling the mind and senses, withdrawing the, 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 the senses from the sense objects um, and engaging them in, in spiritual activities, in devotional activities. And then after that comes dharana. Then one should try f to focus or to hold the form of Krishna and the consciousness. Dharana means to hold. So to try to remember Krishna, sometimes at least. And if one is practicing, then one becomes accustomed. And then, one, and then the consciousness becomes more pure. And then it is more easy to remember Krishna. That is known as dhyan. Uh, if one, one is able to uh, more often remember Krishna. And then when one is able to be uh, fully absorbed in Krishna, in remembering his beautiful form, qualities and pastimes, then one becomes so much absorbed that one becomes detached from this material world. That is known as samadhi. Samadhi. So the intelligence is completely fixed equiposed uh, above the modes of material nature. The consciousness is absorbed in Krishna. So that would be, mm, uh, or in Vishnu or um, so. Uh, so that is a Patanjali. Uh, and, um, but even of course amongst those who are doing Ashtanga Yoga, some of them they are actually Mayavadis also in personalists and they want to merge in the form of Vishnu or Krishna. So as explained also in Sankhya Yoga, some of those who are doing Sankhya Yoga, they are also in personalists, like um, the atheist Kapil Dev is speaking about this philosophy. And nowadays also, even in the universities in India, they are explaining about these six philosophies and mostly in an impersonal way, unfortunately. And then uh, two more are there. Uh, which are also, to some extent, giving a little uh, study of this material world, and that is known by Vaisheshika. And the, the uh, philosopher, uh, so that uh, his name was Kanara, and one about Nyai, so that is uh, um, by Gautam Rishi, uh, so he was also 
giving his philosophy of uh, logic um, by logic explaining about this material nature and then also the spiritual nature. So basically, of course, the devotees, they see everything from the devotional point of view and they understand that the Supreme Lord is existing. So they will uh, interpret these philosophies in a devotional way. And then two are referring so, uh, to, to the Vedas, uh, accepting the Vedas as, as authoritative and we have to abide by the Vedic literatures. Uh, so uh, one of them is Vyasadev, who divided the one Veda in four, Atarva, Rig, Sama, Yajur, Ved, and then he compiled Vedanta Sutra, and then of course also Shema Bhagavatam, and is definitely uh, in our eyes or in our understanding the greatest of these philosophers, and is an incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just like Lord Kapil Dev also. And uh, so, and then there's also one of his disciples, Jaimini, he was also giving an understanding of the Vedic literatures, but more in, re in regards to, uh, f to performing fruitive activities in order uh, to uh, satisfy one's desires, but according to the Vedic literatures also. Uh, so, karma mimamsa. So doing one's karma, but then also according to the Vedic literatures. And in Vedic literatures it is explained that if one has some uh, material desires to be fulfilled, also that is fine, but for that purpose he should do according to the Vedic literatures also. So in this way he may advance and he, became, he may become purified in existence. So whereas Vedavyas, uh, so his that philosophy is also known as Purva Mimamsa, and that is more uh, in regards to becoming free from material activities um, and to, to engage in spiritual activities and in search for the absolute truth by all means. So that is, uh, that is of course, superior. Uh, hmm. And so, of course, to, to, to study uh, so one requires intelligence to understand the subject matter and uh, so and for therefore bhakti yoga sometimes is also explained as buddhi yoga and for that so we should approach a spiritual master who is knowledgeable who is realized and who actually understands the essence of the Vedic literatures uh, so devotee Bhaktivinoda Thakur has explained he should be Sara Grahi Vaishnav. So he should uh, study the scriptures and then he should see what is the essence of, of the scriptures. But for that we should actually approach a spiritual master and who has been also uh, under the instruction of his spiritual master. So in the Guru Parampara disciplic succession ultimately coming from the Supreme Lord also. And then in this way, one will understand what is the essence, and then one can uh, properly perform one's uh, spiritual activities, and then one will get the realization, and then one is able to give the knowledge to others also. So that is a process. We hear, and then we apply in our life, and then we realize, and then we can give to others also. So that um, should be uh, understood. So Prabhupada also making the point here that um, the last snare of Maya is to try to become one with the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> so therefore it should be very clearly explained that there are basically two kinds of philosophers or yogis even or, or munis so the, imperson the personalist and the impersonalist. But we can clearly understand that the absolute truth, by good fortune, by Prabhupada's mercy, that the absolute truth is Krishna. So the personal conception is there. Uh, but in the, in, the, in the material world, the conditioned souls, so many are somehow 
are not able to understand and they are attracted to the personal aspect. So they have to be uh, told or they have to, it has to be explained to them about the superiority or the, and the highest stage of spiritual understanding is the personal conception of the Lord. But even the personal aspect of the Absolute Truth is there and that is respected uh, according to the Vedic literatures. So the great sages, they were very broad-minded and uh, so an understanding that it is not possible for everyone to immediately come to the highest understanding. Some people are very materialistic and they cannot even understand uh, the uh, need of spiritual life. Materialistic people, they are just engaged in sense gratification. But those who are more mm, evolved in spiritual understanding, in consciousness, they understand that beyond this material world there is a, a spiritual realm and that they try to advance. But some of them, they are impersonalists. And so they are respected also, but that is not the highest stage, that is the beginning stage. So we continue. Arjuna has already accepted Krishna as his spiritual master by surrendering himself unto him in the beginning of the second chapter, text number seven. Shishya ste ham sarimam tam prapannam. So now I'm your disciple and prapannam I'm surrendering unto him, unto you. So Arjuna could understand that actually. He's bewildered and he doesn't know exactly what to do and what not to do. And then he's surrendering and asking Krishna to guide him. So consequently Krishna will now tell him about the working process in buddhi yoga or karma yoga. In other words, the practice of devotional service only for the sense gratification of the Lord. This buddhi yoga is, ex is clearly explained in chapter 10. Verse 10, as being direct communion with the Lord who is sitting as Paramatma in everyone's heart. By such communion, uh, does, but such communion does not take place without devotional service. One who is therefore situated in devotional service or transcendent loving service to the Lord, or in other words, in Krishna consciousness attains to this stage of Buddha Yoga by the special grace of the Lord. The Lord says, therefore, that only unto those who are always engaged in devotional service out of transcendent love does he award the pure knowledge of devotion in love. In that way, the devotee can reach him easily in the ever blissful kingdom of God. Yes? Huh? The screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you should move according to how I'm reading. So, yeah, anyhow, so here, uh, about, about Buddha Yoga, uh, so as explained in the 10th chapter, uh, that uh, Krishna is saying that the Dadami Buddha Yogam Tam, Desham Sate Yukta Nam, Bajadam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mama payante te. To those who are constantly devoted to me, to them I give the intelligence by which they can come to me. So, uh, yes, Krishna is giving intelligence, sadhu buddhi, transcendental intelligence, by which we can come to him. But for this we have to engage in devotional service. Otherwise, we will not get the, the, the intelligence, the proper intelligence. So that is an important point to understand. That we have to surrender to Krishna. We have to engage in devotional service. And then we'll get the intelligence. And as explained in this verse also by Krishna, that we should work without fruitive result. We should work for Krishna's pleasure. And then whatever we may get, that is fine. And Krishna is taking care of everyone. And Krishna has explained also in Bhagavad Gita himself in the ninth chapter. Ananya shintan tamam yajana bhapa sate te sam nitya vyoktanam yoga kshemam vaham yaham to those who are constantly devotion, devoted to me. To them I give what they, I, I preserve what they have and I give what they lack. 
So Krishna is helping and providing whatever is required. And then by working in this way, with this knowledge that I should do for Krishna's pleasure, and Krishna then will take care of me also, then one becomes free from reaction to one's work. Otherwise, if one Krishna is not in the center, one is working, if one is then pious, one will get good results. If one is impious, then there will be some uh, result which is not so good. But if you are surrendering to Krishna, there is no reaction. Then we are under Krishna's care and Krishna will take care of us. Uh, and then we have no difficulty and then one is actually becoming liberated from this material existence and that is actually the goal of life. Does the Buddha Yoga mention in this verse? Okay, you have to continue here. Does the Buddha Yoga mention this verse? Is the devotional service of the Lord? And the word Sankhya mentioned herein has nothing to do with the artistic Sankhya Yoga enunciated by the imposter Kapil. One should not therefore misunderstand that the Sankhya Yoga mentioned herein has any connection with the artistic Sankhya. Nor did that philosophy have an influence during that time. Nor would Lord Krishna care to mention such godless philosophical speculations. Real Sankhya philosophy is described by Lord Kapil and the Shema Bhagavatam. But even that Sankhya has nothing to do with the current topic. Here Sankhya means analytical description of the body and the soul. Lord Krishna made an analytical description of the soul just to bring Arjuna to the point of Buddhi Yoga or Bhakti Yoga. Therefore, Lord Krishna Sankhya and Lord Kapila Sankhya, as described in the Bhagavatam, are one and the same. They are all Bhakti Yoga. Lord Krishna there, said, therefore, that only the less intelligent class of men have made a distinction between Sankhya Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Sankhya Yoga, Pritak Bala, Prabhadanti, Napanditaha. <coughs> so, of course, artistic Sankhya Yoga has nothing to do with Bhakti Yoga, yet the intelligent claim that the artistic Sankhya Yoga is referred to in the Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada is making it very clear, because as I explained, uh, at the present time, or even 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, if you speak about Sankhya philosophy, and you go to university, especially in Benares famous, where they teach, the six philosophies of the great sages, uh, so as explained. But mostly they refer to Sankhya philosophy uh, as the philosophy of the artistic capability, of impersonal presentation. So Prabhupada is refuting that. And then he's explaining that ultimately Sankhya of Lord Kapil Dev and Bhakti Yoga is the same. And that we can easily understand. One should therefore understand that Buddhi Yoga means to work in Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> the full bliss and knowledge of devotional service. One who works for the satisfaction of the Lord only, however difficult such work may be, is working under the principles of Buddhi Yoga and finds himself always in transcendental bliss. By such transcendental engagement, one achieves all transcendental understanding automatically by the grace of the Lord. And thus his liberation is complete in itself without his making extraneous endeavors to acquire knowledge. <clears throat> There's much difference between work in Krishna consciousness and work for fruitive results. Especially in the matter of sense qualification for achieving results in terms of family or material happiness. Buddha Yoga is therefore the transcendental quality of the work that we perform. Hmm. So, Prabhupada is stressing here on the point uh, that uh, Buddha Yoga uh, so means to use one intelligence uh, to, to work in Krishna consciousness, to, to serve for the pleasure of the Lord. And uh, specifically also, uh, so serving for the pleasure of the, of the Lord and not for um, fruitive results like this Krishnendriya Priti to satisfy the senses of Krishna not uh, um, Atmendriya Tripti for our own 
such gratification. So we should try to give pleasure to Krishna. But then if Krishna is satisfied, then automatically we'll be satisfied also. And even, for example, we like to eat. So we prepare something, we we'll prepare what Krishna likes. <clears throat> and then uh, we offer to Krishna and then we take Krishna prasadam. So we should do everything for Krishna's pleasure, as Krishna is explained in Bhagavad Gita also. Yad karushi, yad yashnasi, yad jyosi, tadasi, yad. So whatever you do, whatever you eat or give away, should all be done as an offering unto me. So in this way, and then one becomes purified, then one comes to the transcendental platform. And then on the transcendental platform, there's a loving exchange with, with Krishna. Uh, so that is, uh, that is bhakti, bhakti. So with devotion, and uh, and it should be pure. And yabilashi the shonyam jnana karma navritam anukolina krishna nushinam bhakti rutamam. So that is pure devotional service is required. Anushilanam krishna nushilanam as Krishna likes. Uh, so we have to try to understand what Krishna wants us to do. And if we cannot understand ourselves, then we ask the advanced devotee, the spiritual master. And he will tell us what we should do. He will guide us. But then if one is engaged in spiritual activities, <clears throat> guided by the spiritual master, then eventually uh, we become purified in consciousness and then we can take guidance from, from Krishna. Mm. And we will know what actually Krishna wants us to do. Mm. So it is a matter of, of practice, it is a matter of purification of one's consciousness, then the things become much more clear. And then, then one is uh, always able to serve for Krishna's pleasure. Uh, if one is giving up also this fruit of mentality, anyabila shita shunyam, jnana karma navritam. Uh, so should not be any anyabila, any other desire, except we do uh, for Krishna's pleasure. Krishna nur shilanam. Uh, So in this way, by engaging in pure devotional service, uh, Krishna is satisfied and, and of course then automatically uh, we are satisfied. So <clears throat> our desire and Krishna's desire should be one that is there. But even if sometimes the devotee has some specific desire how he wants to serve, that is possible also. Uh, <clears throat> so one may want to uh, serve Krishna in various ways. Somebody likes to serve the deities, somebody likes to do preaching, somebody wants to open a temple. So, so many possibilities are there. And then Krishna is also reciprocating. So, he's giving some inspiration, but then if the devotee has some, 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 uh, some desire to serve in a certain way, then Krishna will also um, let him do. Uh, uh, so, the process is, is very wonderful. And uh, uh, of course, in the beginning, one is conditioned and it seems to be difficult. But the more we advance, the more it becomes easy. And we'll wanna, one will understand what to do, what, what will give pleasure to Krishna. Mm. Of course, difficulties are always there in the material world. Uh, but then by surrendering to Krishna, one can overcome the difficulties. Uh, so we try our best and then Krishna will do the rest. Hare Krishna. Any question? Okay, we'll stop here. Today's Ekadashi, so we chant more. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.